So now in this last section, let's just talk about researching an opportunity. This is part of the feasibility process where you want to make sure you're not doing a false alarm. Or I shouldn't say make sure. You want to minimize the possibility, the probability that you're going to have a false alarm. Different ways you do it. Life, you identify ideas. They come from just where you think the world could be a better place. You brainstorm with friends. You get focus group together. You do library and research. Let's talk about some of these. Brainstorming your ideas. You exchange two to six people, diverse experience. Good to have weak ties in the room. Talk about the issue. Try to bring people that, that haven't already been engaged in your discussion, new, fresh ideas. Think about bad ideas are okay. You don't throw them out. You, just, you don't want to be critical of anyone coming up with something that seems you know, like a crazy idea at first. But at the same time, you want to try to stay focused. You want to say, somebody says something, you say, oh, yeah, and from that, I can build on that. And you blend into this leapfrogging idea. Uh, get a discussion going, but try to keep it focused on what's going on uh, with in, in terms of the context of the business idea. And you generally don't let those go too long, 20 to 30 minutes, something like that. It's a brainstorming session. This is These are how the ideas start to build momentum and roll. These things take time. There's a certain slowness. Uh, Paul Silliers, a philosopher in South Africa uh, that I had known, who has now passed away, used to talk about the best things happen with a certain slowness. So you got to cook the soup or whatever, just the right amount. It takes time for it to come together. Same kind of principle with brainstorming. Primary research. You do focus groups. You can do surveys. But first, you have to know how to develop the questions. You generally facilitate a deep dive discussion with 10 to 12 people that you think are potential customers or users of your product and service. You explore that deeply. Uh, generally, it's better when the idea is pretty well general, gen formulated, but you need to do a, a, a deeper dive into the specific characteristics and a willingness to pay. And of course, you can do secondary research in the libraries, university libraries, large public libraries with different kinds of industry reports and things that they have at, give you access to. Or the Internet uh, online. There's companies that, that have information on this. You've got to always, of course, be careful that it's not, um, it's not paid for advertising that ends up costing you money without getting a lot of return. But like Inc. Magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, those are good um, sites to go and explore what's out there in certain areas. So to summarize opportunities, both of these two modules, Module 2 and Module 3, they arise from changes in the environment and information differences. You have a perspective that others might not have. Some favor incumbent businesses already. And if you're going to be going after one of those, you still want to you want to structure your business in a way that you take advantage of the things that favor startups, like linear costs. In other words, you have to add if you have to add two people, so does uh, uh, General Motors have to add two people, or Google would have to add two people, or Facebook would have to add two people. If you have to add two people, they can't do what you're going to do. If you take you to add three people and they can't do it with one other person or the same number of the same people, they have to also have those same costs. So you want to structure it so that it's knowledge oriented um, in that sort of context and in a fragmented, discrete industry. So that's remember, sometimes you're beating your head against the wall if you're going after one of the big guys and they can do it a lot cheaper and faster and they have the assets that you don't. Entrepreneurs identify these opportunities utilizing their own rich life experiences and various kinds of intelligence, cognitive intelligence, but also uh, creativity and also practical intelligence, the ability to get things done, and also social and emotional intelligence, the business, the ability to get things done with others. Next, we're going to go into this idea of the business model, and we'll have a module that talks about the, the business model. Um, I'll do a little introduction and then I'll, I'll let you see the actual person who invented the 
canvas business model, which people use a lot in the industry. It's a very useful tool. There are other examples, but we'll talk about this specific one because it kind of started this mode. It's a very good tool to start with right after you've kind of vetted your idea. Don't yet know if you can make it into a business. And this is sort of the first thing you do on the way to developing your business plan and putting your team together. That's next at Module 4.